All right. Well, Dave, thank you. I, I, um, I was trying to remember the other day how you and I met. I know we have some mutual friends, but one of my favorite memories of you and us together was just about a year ago when I was teaching in the sports management program at UC Riverside and you came out and spoke to my students and uh, all year long, I stayed in touch with that particular class and a lot of them talked about that time with you and, and uh, that experience and little did we know how our world was about to change right after that time that you and I saw each other, right? Yeah, you know, you know, and we were talking before we before we got going here and about, you know, that change, but then also those opportunities that uh, that are afforded us and we never know what's going to result to them. And, and I talked to a lot of young people when, you know, when given an opportunity to do anything and and that's to, to look at it is, is, are you going in there with a purpose or with an agenda? And so when you asked me to come out to speak to your class, I certainly had no agenda. It wasn't about right. me. You know, it's about, hey, yeah, I could talk to those students. You know, what was so cool about that, uh, Ed, I, I think I shared it with you, but I had two of your students reach out to me from, from France. Right. That was part of their, um, their um, what's, what's the end like paper? Like their master's thesis. Or yeah, whatever. the thesis, yeah. yeah. yeah you know, in really two cool. different subjects, br bright young men, and, uh, and they both sent them to me. And it was a great to be uh, a part of that and to contribute. And for them, for me to have left enough of an impression that they did reach out to me because yeah. what was the one thing that I told them is like, if somebody gives you their card, you follow up, you call them because Absolutely. they didn't give it to you just because they have nothing else to do. Yeah. They gave it to you. I have this box of business cards I'm trying to get rid of. No, there's a reason they're trying to start a connection. That's right. You know, and, uh, and I'm, and I'm friends with probably, uh, about six of them are friends or connections on, mm -hmm. on uh, LinkedIn and they yeah. did reach out. I didn't reach out to them. So that Good was for really them. Cool, Good. You know? That's good. Yeah, that's good. So you mentioned two words and they're not in my notes, but since you said them, I want to talk to you about the difference between purpose and agenda. Tell me just when you hear, I, I'm going to do a lot of word association with you today. I'm going to start right there. Difference between right, purpose. Okay. So am, am I going to get an analysis at the end? Well, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm not a psychologist. I just play one on a podcast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll send this to all my psychiatrist friends. <laughs> you don't want to go there. Believe me. Uh, trust me. I don't either. I don't want them looking at me and talking to me either. So, so when, when dealing with purpose versus agenda, and it's something I learned, I think, in sales, and, you know, if you pay attention, you learn things in life, but um, being a salesperson, you can take a, a meeting and utilize these two approaches, and if, and if you are going in with a purpose, um, of course, it's not about you, it's about the, the other person and, and what kind of value can you provide and, and, and what will you do? If you go in with an agenda, it's about you. Yeah. And it's about what can you get out of this? And what I share with them is, is that if you look across from that person and all you see is a dollar sign, well, you've already lost. Because if you're a good salesperson, you'll get that dollar, right? Yeah. You'll get the transaction. And that's all it will be. Because yeah. when they leave and you don't follow up and they never hear from you again, they will feel like they got sold. Nobody likes to be sold. Right. You know, they want to purpose build a relationship. So if it's not about you, it's about them. And it's like, what can I do to help you? How, what can, what of my knowledge and this service can I do to, to make your life better or provide a service to you? And, and what I share a lot of times too, is that a lot of times you don't even maybe do business with that person, right? But you find something that you can do together or they then refer you to somebody. And the reason why I was so successful in business was that I never, asked for a check in my first meeting. I know a lot of salespeople, financial advisors, always yeah, be closing, always be closing. Get, ABC, exactly, yeah. get it done, get the next, get the commission. And I never asked. And then I would go back again. Um, I would have clients that became clients for life saying, Dave, can I just give you a check? Yeah. You know, because I just wanted to make sure that they weren't buying the investment. They were buying me. Right. And I was the right person that was going to take care of their money and care about them and, and really give them the, the best advice. And the reason, you know, that so many guys, you know, each year start over is because they don't have that relationship. They've just, they're just doing transactions, mm -hmm. the agenda driven transaction, transaction, transaction versus a purpose driven uh, building a relationship. And then not only will you do business with that person inevitably, but you'll do person uh, business with their family and their friends and, and everybody else. And the person that was sold isn't going to tell anybody about you. And I have a quick, I have a quick example of that. And yeah, please. I love telling stories, but I sat across from a couple, baby in hand, mm. you know, 
she says, my dad said, I needed to come talk to you instead of a college fund for our child, you know, and if we want to start with $100 a month, you know, what do we need to do? And I said, okay, well, first, my first bit of advice is let's start with 25. Yeah. Because if you start with a bigger number and things get tight, you don't reduce it. You just quit. Just stop. Right. So let's start with 25. And then if you get a raise and if it's comfortable, then you increase it and people will increase and, uh, and then I said, okay. And then I started talking about all these mutual funds and how they work. And I, Dave, <laughs> can we just sign the thing? Yeah. <laughs> well, even if it's just 25 a month, you need to understand how this works, you know? So that way, you know, as you get familiar with it and we'll branch out and we'll diversify and, and all this stuff, well, you know, of course they signed up. Yeah. Um, and it was a few weeks later, and this is going back a while. So it, it was a little bit of time later, but the dad came in. And, uh, and he just said, Hey, Dave, you know, my daughter told me everything that you told them. And first of all, you talked them out of giving you yeah. money. And then you spent time with them to uh, make sure they were educated and they're making the right decisions. And he goes, I, go, I really appreciate that. And as a matter of fact, I've been having some thoughts about my own portfolio. Hmm. And would you mind taking a look at it? I said, sure. I'd love to take a look at yeah. it. The first check he gave me was eight hundred thousand dollars, and ended up investing over two point five. No, just do six hundred thousand in case you can't afford it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, I mean, that is, and that is just that solidifies just my that whole purpose driven, right? right. I, I I created value. I cared about my client, which is what we should be doing anyways. Um, but then dad comes in knowing what I did for them. If I had just if I had just taken the hundred bucks a month, she would have never said anything to dad. Dad would have never come in. As, I believe, you right. know. So. Yeah, I've had similar experiences. One recently, and I won't name names because it's still confidential at this point. But we had a uh, a client that's part of our Center for Family Business at Cal State Fullerton. Same type of thing. I've known him for ten years that I've been in the role, and nine years in, he called a meeting for dinner and sat down with me and and my boss. And you know, I'd like to support the center a little bit more than I have been. And it wasn't that he was really. I mean, we had conversations about it over the years, but I never actually made the official ask. And he's the one that came to us. And it really is. You, you hit spot on. My whole life's about relationships. Everything in my life, if there's not people involved in relationships, then I'm not interested. And it sounds like you're very similar. And I think that's where you and I kind of, some friendships, you just kind of hit the ground running. Yeah. And I think you and I did because we both just saw the purpose in this friendship rather than either of us having an agenda in this friendship. That's it. And we were, we were introduced by, by Lisa, uh, that right. is a, a uh, somebody I met through a networking group and she just thought, right. Hey, you two guys are like-minded maybe because we're big and jolly. We're both big guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause you make me look little. So I appreciate <laughs> hanging out with you. So, yeah. but she just, she thought it would be a good breakfast and, yeah. and neither of us, you're right. We both just said, yes, we both mm -hmm. just showed up yep. and here we are. Absolutely. So, indeed. So I'm going to ask you a question that I usually, I don't even ask this question very often, but I wrote a little note. I noticed behind you, you've got pictures, team pictures, and, and obviously memorabilia, as do I. Find an item that's within arm's reach of you. Uh, obviously, if it's in your office, it's important to you. Any item, you can turn around, whatever, grab an item and tell me the story behind it. That's often for me a really great way for me and for my audience to get to know somebody. What do you keep around you that you can reach and what's the story and the significance behind it? I'll be right back. Yeah, please. I'll play the little hold music right now. So for those that are just listening, he's got an American flag, well, some football memorabilia, yeah. team pictures, but he didn't grab something I could see in the camera. What no, did he grab? That, you know, uh, Ed, that is the obvious, right? To be able to be a right. kid, to achieve that level, you know, and, and uh, I, 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 as many of us humble people do discount it, but it was, it was a great achievement. And, and that's, that's the obvious. And we could probably talk about it because I wasn't good at football. And I got to that level. So yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Sure. Um, but what I grabbed was this. Okay. Describe what and you got there. So, it's got a model jet airplane. There, well, so. it isn't. It, okay. Well, it is. But it, it was to my aunt. Um, she was granted the engineer of the month for McDonald Douglas. Hmm. So there's, there's a story behind this. Awesome. Is that she was at a gathering. And there was a, a, a male uh, engineer, she, you know, being a female engineer and she's 83. So there weren't many back then. Sure. And she designed the wings. It was on the team to design the wings for the DC 10. Um, he was saying how he was given, you know, uh, the engineer of the month for his firm. And so being part of the conversations, he said, you know, oh, that's interesting. I was also 
you know, uh, uh, granted just recently the uh, engineer of the month. And he said to her, oh, is that like a rotating thing? Huh. <laughs> and she said, I don't know. There's 3,000 of us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be humble and, you know, I mean, so do the math. If it was a monthly rotation. It's going to take a while to get through 3,000. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not in our lifetime. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but so when, when I start getting a little full of myself, which we tend to do, I just look at th that and the humility and the, and, and the humble person that she is. And just also to note that she was granted the Amelia Earhart Award of Aviation, uh, you know, uh, yeah. of Aviation Award. And so just an, a, a neat, a neat lady, um, you know, both my mom and her, my her, their parents, my grandparents, just all, all humble people. My mom became the CFO of a privately owned bank without a degree. Wow. So the, the level of achievement, you know, um, it just, it really, it's, it's humbling to me that, you know, that these women back in the day of, you know, of, of the, what they were able to achieve is, is pretty neat. So yeah. there's a story. Awesome. I appreciate that very much. And it's not, it's just when, usually when someone's camera pops up and I start seeing things behind them, the question pops up. Okay. One of those items, obviously if you look behind me, I've got bobbleheads and an autograph Vince Scully picture and a book <laughs> yeah. I wrote and other books I've read. And it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of really fun stuff there too. But, um, so other than your hard work, obviously, cause our success is typically a product of our own effort, a, a fair amount of luck, a whole lot of blessings, but also the inspiration or the, or the drive from someone else, who would that someone else be? First, I mean, there's a lot of people, obviously, again, that 3000 months or 3000 people in a rotating award, I get there's right. a lot. You could probably, we could probably do five hours on all the people that have inspired you, but who's the first person that came to mind and why? Well, so, so once again, real, real easy go to for me, I just had breakfast with him yesterday hmm. and that was my high school football coach. Awesome. The story. Yeah. No, please. Yeah. Here, here's the story. The story is this, is that, um, so back in high school, my, my sport was basketball and, uh, and, and that's six foot six, by the way. I mean, I know you're seeing him sitting down if you're yeah. watching, but he is six foot six. So. Yeah, I used to be six seven. So, okay. but the gravity. Yeah. 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 So the basketball <laughs> there, I spoke at the uh, at the mission to a group of people, and the gentleman that asked me to do this, the chaplain for the Lakers, and that basketball came from Jeannie Bus. It's hmm. uh, the LA uh, Lakers uh, summer basketball. You nice. know, like got some sweats and some other really cool things. Kobe Bryant shoots. Anyways, cool. The story of my high school football coach, and that is, um, uh. I wasn't going to play football. Uh, he came on campus at the end of my junior year in high school. And I distinctly remember when he walked up to me, uh, I, you know, he goes, Hey, big, he goes, Hey, big guy, you playing football? And I said, no. Hmm. And he said, why? I said, well, I play basketball. I made it to the final cut for the junior Olympic team. And, um, and I have a couple of scholarship offers. Well, one color scholarship interest and then one offer from Cal state LA. He goes, well, come play football for me. I'll get you a better scholarship. I said, coach, I'm not very good. You know, he goes, you've got a frame. If you, do you want to play? I said, yeah, I'd love to play. I'm just not very good. So I go out after about three days. He pulls me aside. He goes, he goes, son, uh, you, you're not very good. <laughs> you were right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like, nice. Right on, coach. Uh, thanks. And he goes, you know, one thing you just need, you need, you need to uh, grow into your body. He goes, but you need uh, to be lighter on your feet. Hmm. And he handed me a jump rope. And, um, and so I look at the jump rope and I said, all right, so a 17 year old kid that's uncoordinated is being given a thing that girls do. Uh, right, I'm not right going to do this in front yeah. of anybody, you know, and, and what could this possibly do for me? But I didn't want to be good. And I took it home hmm. and one skip at a time. I don't know if you've ever jumped rope, oh, yeah. but so not you for a while, toes, but yeah, yeah. You hit your toes a couple of times and yep. you know, and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But I kept doing it every single day until I got fairly prolific at it. And cool. and I remember pulling him aside. I said, hey, coach, because he was at the track. Like, said, next to the track. I'm just like, so many distinct things that you remember in your, you know, in your life. But yeah. I said, hey, want to jump rope? He looked at me. And I'm like, come on. And I <laughs> and he started doing like that one, one, one. Right. And, like, and you're just flying. And, and, and your goes, hands are barely moving. And yeah. Yeah. And he goes. He goes, you know, good for you. And I remember just feeling so good about myself. And, you know, and so the, the story I share is that, you know, gee, did that make me a better football player? I don't, I have no idea. Um, but it, it did give me confidence. It, it was like given to me to make me better at, at something. And, and, 
And he, what the thing was is that he was right. Yeah. Um, when I got done with my senior year of football, uh, I took trips to Cal. Um, I was uh, talking to U of A, Hawaii, Colorado, and then went to to San Diego State, who I inevitably chose mm -hmm. to to play football. And, um, and the story I share is this: is that with within a couple of days, five incoming freshmen. What do you think the offensive line coach handed each of us? A jump rope. A jump rope. Nice. And those four other guys looked at it like I did a year ago. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do with this? And I went right to. And, and and like I said, the reason I share this is because what do you think that coach thought of me immediately? Of uh, you know, of our stature is all the same. It immediately put me, even if it's just slightly ahead. Absolutely. Of yeah. the others, you know. And the and the story that I like to tie this to is that. When you have somebody is advising you to do something that you don't want to do, they're not doing it to make you look foolish or to make your life right. horrible. They're doing it because they think you benefit from that, you mm -hmm. know, and you don't know how that's ever going to come back to you. And it's, it's just a great lesson that sports taught me. But that coach, um, I could tell you this, there was five guys that went division one from that team. So he didn't need me. Two right. of us went to the NFL. Wow. And one guy was always good. He was yeah. he was the best guy in the field. Jumping you know, rope or and, not, and, he was good. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was really good. I had potential. Yeah. <laughs> and, you That's, know, potential potential is a nice way of telling somebody you're not very good. You're not good enough yet. Yeah, you might be. Yeah, exactly. Because you're potential you're rocket scientist. But, yeah, you know, you're good, other they than say the, you're good. Yeah. Well, and that that's that's a great lesson in leadership and mentorship too. That you know the people who see potential in us, and when we see potential mm -hmm. in other people we will do what we can to develop them. And, you know, kind of the onus is on us as those that are being seen with potential is asking why, well, what is it about it? Not so much, Hey, why do you want me to jump rope? But what is it that you see in me that, you know, cause there's probably a lot of big guys that came through and he probably didn't hand them a jump rope because he didn't see that potential or knew that eh, they won't right. do it because they don't have the, the drive. How has that lesson that you just shared with us, um, parlayed into your career. I mean, obviously going into the NFL and I'd like to go there, but let's take it away from the football field for a moment and then come back to it. How has that developed you in maybe those, those down, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. Those down moments that wasn't emotion. That was allergies, maybe a little emotion, but you know, mostly allergies. Um, how has that parlayed into your career and what you're doing now? Well, it, you know, it, 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 it parlayed, it, fairly soon or early on in, in, in a career that I did for 20 years, and that was in financial planning. Uh, when I first became licensed, for, well, I went from football to acting to general contractor to then fully licensed to become a financial advisor. So that so logical career a, path that everybody wasn't wanted, a clear yeah. path. No, yeah. and, and that will lead me to what I'm doing today. But, right. but there's, but there is, there was an immediate uh, uh, usage of what I learned there. And that was, um, when I, my first year, I made like $5,000 and my ex-wife goes, you know, are you sure you should be doing this? And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, I really think I could be good at it. Uh, we got pregnant. And so I took a position as a junior rep for a banking, uh, a financial platform, uh, great Western securities. And okay. I was a junior rep making 1800 a month. <laughs> and my job was to take the phone book. I think most of your most of your audience will know what a phone book is. Yeah, I, except for I, the young I have folks, to explain yeah. it when I'm talking yeah. to kids. <laughs> it's not that contact list on your phone. It's an actual no, book. Yeah. A big book of phone yeah. numbers. And my job was to go through and call strangers uh, and convince them to come in and see us. And, and, the, and the goal was, is what they said was, is that you have to make at least 30 dials. Mm -hmm. And you have to at least talk to 10 people and set two appointments a day for your senior rep. Yeah. Well, you know, always the first question I ask is how much fun does that sound to any of you right. talking to complete strangers and convince them to come see you? And, and nobody ever says me. Yeah, like, sign me up. Let's do this. So Ed, what I did was, is I called a hundred people and I spoke to 25, I mean, uh, 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 25 to 30 people. I'm trying to think of wait, the numbers incrementally, um, but it, but it was to set five appointments a day. And going back to the jump rope, what do you think that did immediately? My senior advisor was telling all his buddies that were senior advisors, all of them wanted me to come work for them. Sure. Management found out. The next thing I know, within month, within a month, I was actually asked to give presentations to all the other junior advisors on how to cold call. 
Within four months, I was given my own branch. It was a senior advisor. Hmm. And within four years, I became a vice president of a bank. That's awesome. And it put me on the fast track, just yeah. like the coaches with the jump rope. Yeah. It, you, if you do more, better, faster, you will set yourself apart. And because a lot of people just punch the clock and do what's expected, and that's all they do. And yeah. by doing that, it, it projected me and propelled me. And so that was kind of the, the lesson. And, you know, and I did that for 20 years and I, and I enjoyed it, but uh, path two is a, a little bit different animal. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and go right into that. Then let's talk about path two. Yeah. So, so I had uh, sold my firm and uh, my practice, I went through a divorce, sold it. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of meandered. I was kind of just doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I got into some collecting and selling antiques and buying stuff at thrift stores. And I loved that stuff. And, and frankly, I would find $9 lamps and sell them for 300. And awesome. it was about the search and I, and I enjoyed it, but it was just not much doing much. And I met uh, Dr. Ellison, uh, who is the uncle of my fiance. Hmm. And he said, Dave, because I told him what I did, you know, football, uh, acting, you know, general contractor and vice president. And da, 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 da. he goes, well, you've done a lot of things at a pretty high level. Um, he goes, I, I was writing a book. And, and it was a career happiness and success. You can have both. And he was writing about his collegiate experience. He's a PhD engineer from uh, Carnegie Mellon. Hmm. And, um, and he was amazed at the statistics of kids just failing at their uh, collegiate experience. I mean, taking six years to graduate, 70% leaving with an average debt of $35,000. 70%, 800,000 yeah. kids a year graduating and not using their degree. Right. You know, Paying and, for a degree they're not going to use. Yeah. And and half of them are taking jobs that don't even require a degree. Yeah. You know, and, and he's going, what the heck is this, you know? And, and so then he started taking the the programs, the career assessments, you know, the black box. Answer mm -hmm. some questions and we'll tell you. Right. Well, he took one, then he took the next, then he took the next. And each of them, of course, because they're just all different, had different results, none of which were given him engineer, which he knew he was great at. He owned four companies, one privately, publicly traded at $500 million. So wow. was, he's very successful in that field and loved it. And then he started thinking, well, gosh, if this is all that's there, no wonder, you know, that these kids are, are not, you know, figuring it out. And so he went and put together a program and, he, he utilizes, of course, personality, which is what those most of those are, is personality driven. And that's what you love to do. Mm -hmm. right. And you need to know that. But um, I love to sing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What am I good at? Not, right? Yeah. But I'm not yeah. good at it. Right. And so you need to know what you're good at, too. And that's your aptitude. And and our program marries both. Anyways, so he says, I put together this program. He goes, would you take it? And I said, sure. And at that time, it was an Excel spreadsheet and a pencil. Mm -hmm. And I took them and I graded them and I used my interests, my preferences, my traits and uh, income, education and job growth are all the different categories that we utilized. And three days later, when I got done, mm -hmm. I said, you know, uh, I said, Dick, this is so much more than working with high school students and helping them with their collegiate experience. It's those kids sitting in junior college. It's those mm -hmm. kids about to graduate from college that are just now realizing they have no clue what they're going to yeah. do. And then beyond that, beyond the collegiate side of it, this program can help professional athletes. When I left, I didn't yeah. plan on leaving. Right. I went and sold cars. I had no yeah. clue what to do, you know? Uh, yeah, not veterans. many athletes get to walk away when they want to. Most are told you're walking away. Yeah, most are told. Yeah, there, there's two types of players. <laughs> ones that have been cut and, one, and those ones that are going to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> Uh, uh, veterans, you know, transit transitioning from uh, from service to, to civilian life, and then right now um, there's about the, the numbers range. But Gallup, Gallup came up with a poll of 83% are disengaged. 83% of U.S. workers. Right. That's a million people hate their job. Yeah. Um, I said we could help so many people with this, and he looked at me. And I said, Dave, you he goes, I've never been so excited about what I'm doing. Will you come help me with this? And I said, Sure. And today we are, we are www.path2.net. It's an online software program. 
the beauty of it is, and I won't go into all the good that's a bullshit, sure. but I get so excited about it because yeah. we are a hundred percent transparent. So when your top two careers are done at the end, and it takes a few hours, it's some work, but you know why they're there because going back to the black box that generates five to 50 results, no rhyme or reason. I've been told I could be a, a food line superintendent mm -hmm. or a, a supervisor or a, a janitorial supervisor. I've run like three businesses, you know, and yeah. those are the results I'm getting. Right. So, you know, it's like, no wonder people get stuck. And then, yeah. and then what we found is if you take them more than once, your results will vary just based on answering two or three yeah. questions different. Well, that's yeah, my results great. tell me that I should either be a pastor or a bartender. <laughs> So it's like, I mean, I can see where they have similarities. So you know? you're similarities, listening to people yeah. and you're giving them things to make them feel better. It's just a little <laughs> bit different what you're giving, but uh, so yeah, I'm going to start the, uh, the the church bar someday. But yeah, yeah quote of scripture, get a shot reach, of tequila. So, yeah. but you know, so anyway, so the, so that's why you know because of my path, you know, and and it, it was just so enlightening, and I learned so much about myself, and that's what we hear from everybody going through it. It's, it's, it's not just career, it's self-discovery in so many different facets, but because it's transparent, you know exactly why, if at the end of it, architect isn't there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I think about yeah. it, I wanted to be an architect. Why is an architect there? That's dumb. I'm going to be an architect anyways. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? Why drive down a road that's not going to take you to the destination that's going to do anything for you? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So awesome. love, love what we're doing and, and, and back to purpose versus agenda, it's purpose driven. It, we, we are helping so many people. Um, and we work with veterans groups, uh, the uh, National Veterans Chamber, and we're, and we're pulling people together, you know, by utilizing what we do and then finding their strengths and the services they provide veterans and building a community, which is really kind of a side just benefit from doing all of this. Yeah. So go through that mental Rolodex that you have right now that wakes you up every day, fired up and excited for this and tell us a story, change the names to protect the innocent or whatever you want to do. But tell us a story about someone that has been benefited from this process and and what wakes you up every day to, to just jump in and be excited about this so i um it, you know it, it, great questions ed you know huh. I, I, I couldn't have written them better myself because oh, well you know answers, we, uh... <laughs> which is which is rare for me to have an immediate answer because you know the you see well, the, the, be on those the best questions are the one that get us to stop and pause and think for that's why i asked you grab an item you know at first you had to think like what's the item what's the story yeah. and you know, and the yes, no question. I'm, I'm not a great question person. I mean, I, I understand when I hear a good question, I jot it down and say, Ooh, I'm going to ask that question too. So I'm just, <laughs> should, a, see, thanks. I should be doing that. Hey, so, um, it, 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 there's, uh, well, okay. So now, now I have two, you gave me too much time to think. Uh, it's all right. Okay. We got time. Okay. So I, I'll tell you, one of the first kids to go through our program was at Chico state. And I think it was his second year in average student hadn't declared yet and um so you know obviously didn't know what what he wanted to do and it was really just kind of being more chico state than the yeah. student yeah. and um if you're familiar with the campus yeah the oh yeah I, I know the ratio absolutely a lot of my guy friends <laughs> so, went there because of the ratio no doubt yeah. about it so so anyhow um he took the program and here's the first cool thing his results were his number one career was gis Geographical information systems. Well, hmm. first of all, I didn't know what that was. Yeah. You know, and who does? Right. That's the beauty of people this. doing it. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. But that isn't it. I mean, what 20 year old struggling in school is going to Google, hey, should I go into GIS? Right. Nope. You get the normal every marketing director. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. What this program did is it pointed him to everything in your intrinsic characteristics, GIS. So, you know, the heck. Graduated one of six in GIS, went on to have two internships and uh, enrolled in a master's program with GIS. That is, I mean, yeah. to, to point a, a kid to a career that <laughs> I didn't know existed. Yeah. What do you want to be uh, when you grow up? Yeah, nobody says that. Nobody says that. Mm -hmm. And so that was really cool. The other story is more an emotional uh, tie. I had done a podcast uh, with uh, Daniel Pooter and um, Shelly Harrison was the person that connected us both. And as we were waiting to go on, her son was with her and uh, and he was there to take photos and he just was interested in photography and was 20, I think, four, not sure what he wanted to do. Um, and we were just talking about that. And I said, you know what? I, I appreciate all this. I'll, I'll scholarship you through our program. And so Shelly was very appreciative. 
and um, and her son went through. Shelly contacted me, called me, and it was in tears. Okay, so when you have a mom that just was so happy, right. she says, Dave, you're not going to believe this. We've been telling Chris for his whole life he should get into singing. He's got a beautiful voice. Hmm. Family's been telling him. We've been telling him. And he is was adamant that I don't want to, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go on stage and I don't want to sing. He went through our program. Number one, mm -hmm. singer, songwriter. Number two, um, uh, singing um, um, uh, teacher, instructor. So, nice. and he said, look, if, my, if I'm telling me that I need to do this. And, and so he enrolled into this uh, a music deal immediately. Um, and so of course, Shelly yeah. is a huge advocate of ours. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, and so is exactly. Chris, her son, because you know now it, it's him telling him. Right. Getting back to the beauty of our program is that you are seeing this go along. You know, it's not just a, it's not just da, 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 boom. Here you go. It's you're watching and you're bringing the careers along based on all that's important to you. Mm -hmm. And the ones that fall by the wayside is because it didn't fit your criteria, not some algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love hearing you tell that story because it's, you know, when you, when you ask somebody a question to talk about their passion, the first thing you recognize when they're talking is it's a passion. Uh, it goes without saying, but I mean, yeah. you just light up. I, I hope people are watching and not just listening when we, when we put this up because the passion that, that lights up in your eyes and, and the hand signals and everything else. It's like, I yeah, you like I'm me. I'm not Italian I, either. Yeah, I'm if just... I didn't have hands, I probably couldn't talk, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, and, and I'm not even Italian. Yeah, but and, and you know what, Ed? And I've been telling those stories for four years. Yeah, and it's still lights you know? the fire. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, I had dinner last night with a couple of good buddies from church, and and while we were sitting there, a guy I I used to work as a general manager in minor league baseball for a few seasons, and a young man that pitched for us for my first two years recognized me at the restaurant and came over, and that's been 15, 16 years ago, but. We, he and I started talking stories from back in the minor league baseball days. And it was like, it was yesterday. And these are stories mm -hmm. I've told for 15 years, but it was like, it was brand new. And it's just, yeah. A, yeah. When something's in your heart and that's why the podcast was called from the heart. And we're going to go there again in a little while. Um, when it's in your heart, it just, it just lights up your whole being. And the cool thing is that people can feel it. And that's why I do this. Cause I want people to feel your stories and whether somebody else goes into doing what you do as a result of this or takes the, the test and, finds out what their real purpose is or not, I want them to feel your passion and why you, why you do what you do. So let's talk a little bit. Let's go back for a minute. It's Super Bowl week as we're recording mm -hmm. this. Uh, so, you know, we've got Tampa Bay against Kansas City on Sunday, and I'm going to ask for your prediction here in a little bit and why. But I want to hear a little bit. Not many people I talk to and very few people that most of us talk to day in and day out got to play in the NFL. So I just want to, and I know your, your career in the NFL was short, but most are. You know, I think the average career is three years because of injury or whatever the other, you know, incidents might be. Or like you said, we're told we're done. You know, and that happens. Talk just about, you know, any experience that comes up in your time, you're drafted by the Seahawks in the 12th round. You were just four years prior to that told you weren't any good. You jumped rope. You got to San Diego State. You obviously yeah. excelled enough to get drafted in the NFL. You've already touched on some of this, but I'd love to hear the process where first, first question, I guess, is, when did it click for you that, hey, this could be what I do for a living? So let's ask that question first, and then I'll ask my next one. Sure. So, um, yeah, it, it was kind of neat, the, the evolution and the growth. You know, the, the one, uh, let's see, this, this right here, this was um, uh, an invitation or the, the game I played in with uh, Tim Brown, Thurman Thomas, and, mm -hmm. and Icky Woods, Ken Norton Jr., um, the Lula Bowl, which is a collegiate all-star game. Yeah. As well my college helmet has all the different stickers on it and nice. very proud to have attained, you know, that level. Now I was hoping to go a little higher than 12th round, but I went 12th round. That's fine. You know, we didn't have cell phones and we didn't have ways to get connected. And when I didn't get drafted on the first day, the second day I was pouting. And mm -hmm. so I just went and played basketball with my brother. Um, and evidently the Rams are calling and these teams are calling yeah. and, you know, and my mom picked the phone off, off the wall. <laughs> exactly. I had to stand next to the wall. Kids, there used to be phones that used to attach to the wall and we had to stand by the wall to talk to people, just so you know. Yeah. So, uh, so, um, you know, then I get home and she goes, you know, what are you guys doing? You know, but anyway, she goes, well, by the way, you got drafted by the Seahawks. So I said, okay. 
you know, right. and all I am, you know, being from San Diego State was tank tops and shorts, and, yeah. and I'm going to Seattle where everything. Got to get an umbrella. But when when it when it started to to kind of you know get real was uh, during two days, um, the veteran offensive lineman would uh, after the second practice go to the local pizza place and have a couple of beers before the mm-hmm. evening meetings and um and uh i don't know how many weeks in it was but it you know it, it had been a while through camp finally one of them came to me and said hey look we're going over to grab pizza um come join us well i'm a rookie and i didn't know and i'm like oh yeah. the veterans you know and so i invited another rookie guy with me that was in camp show up the first thing they did he pulled me aside he goes what's he doing here hmm. and i'm like well why you know, we invited you yeah so, you know, it is very, it's very, you know, that way, at least it was in the day. So, sure. um, so to me, I'm thinking, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of, if they wouldn't be inviting me, if it didn't right. look, look promising for me, that was and their was way really of handing you a me, jump rope. What, what, I, what I came to find out was my job was to go not only get the beer, but pay for it. But oh, there you go. Yeah. The rookie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but we're sitting around the table and, and Brian Bosworth was on the team at that time. And, and Brian was always there because he had written a book the year before and criticized the offensive line. And so he's trying to get into their good graces. He actually called them worse than the uh, Huskies offensive line. And, you know, it's Brian Bosworth. It's, it's Bosworth. Yeah. It's Brian being boss. And there's yeah, different... Bos opened his mouth a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. But most was, of us but... rooted for Bo Jackson when he knocked Bosworth on his butt. That yeah. was something we all kind of cheered for a little bit. But there was, but see, but that was, that was Boz the persona, not Brian the man. And they yeah, are different. Like, like you know, I don't know how much time we have, but anyway, they digress. Sure. We're sitting around the table and, uh, and Boz shared that Gargoyle had contracted with him to come out with his own line of Gargoyle glasses, like on Terminator. And they were called 44 Blues. Hmm. And and all the guys said, "Hey Brian, you know, you gotta give us a pair." And he said, "Sure, I'll get you guys a pair." I, I maybe had a couple of beers, so I said, hmm. "You know, hey, can I, you know, can I get a pair too?" And he he looked at me, and goes, "Look, you worry about making the team, yeah, and then we'll figure it out." Um, the day of final cuts, uh, and I didn't have a black thing on my locker, and I didn't yeah. have to go see Chuck. No Chuck Moss was our head coach. Yeah, okay. uh, I I go to my locker. I'm looking. I'm like. And I, and I sit down, I look up, and there's a pair of 44 blues in the nice. table. And that's Brian the man. Yeah. Is that he, I didn't say anything. I mean, it was weeks, you know, and there's a pair sitting in there the day of, of Final Cuts. To me, that's it's kind of an emotional thing. It was like, you yeah. know, that was Amazing. cool of him. But, um, you know, I, I ended camp. I, I made the paper twice in camp. <laughs> One was the rookie offensive lineman at 295 pounds running with the tight ends and linebackers because I was really in very good shape. Yeah. Um, so I guess that impressed them. Um, the other was is that I ended camp in a brawl. Um, I was going against um, Tony Hill, who was a great rush end and doing one-on-one drills. We went, and I, you know, I don't know the results of it. We went, Chuck was watching. Hmm. Chuck goes again. So Tony and I, I back up. And if you don't know, you're going mano a mano, right? right Badly. Yeah. I mean, everything you've got in that one rep, mm-hmm. again. End of practice. Boom. Chuck goes, again. Hmm. Third time. Tony's puffing. Yeah. I'm, you know, in my stance. And I'm, I know head coach is watching. I know what he's looking for, you know. Third. Again. Hmm. And I'm sucking air. And I literally... Just three steps in, take them, boom, to the ground, tackle them. We get up swinging, and and behind me, every offensive lineman had grabbed a defensive lineman, and they're swinging. No, oh, <laughs> like, so this became a war, offense off versus defense. Nice. <laughs> and it just, it, rookie breaks camp with a brawl, you know, yeah. was, was, you know those, those are my two headlines. There you <laughs> go. Camp. Hey, no bad press. All press is good press, right? <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. They knew who you were. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love going back to Boz, you know, Brian putting those sunglasses in your locker because, you know, it, it, there are those things that we do that little little tokens that we don't have to do or people do for us that just kind of either say, hey, you made it or good for you or congratulations. Yeah. And that was kind of his nonverbal way of just saying, hey, good job, kid. So, yeah. Very cool. Indeed. You know, and I mean, and, and, and when I'm sharing this story, I mean, I, I remember the emotion and, and to your point, is that that little act that he did, and probably even had somebody else do, is like, hey, babe, make sure, make sure, uh, they called me Leo for Leo's Rosary. Hey, make sure Leo has a pair of glasses nice. in, his, in his locker, you know. Yeah, 
So it took very little for him to yeah. do. And what a difference it made in my life. And it's a story I share in my life. Yeah. And how easy is it for us to just discount what little acts that we could be doing that make this incremental mark in, in somebody's life. And I just, you know, I, every opportunity I get, you know, I, I try to, to do that and, and mm. try to be that person. You never know what it's going to mean to somebody. Wow. That's the whole, that, a lot more of that today. Yeah. That that's the, that's the big, I mean, there's a lot so far and a few more coming, I know, but that's one of the huge takeaways for this time that I'm having with you this morning is just, mm -hmm. it's those little things that we do. And really, yeah. When I look back now and I could start processing, if you were interviewing me, I'd start telling you stories about tiny little gestures that things of things that people have done from my wife to my kids, to friends, to bosses, to coaches, just that little gesture that probably didn't take very much effort on their part. But I still like, like you, I still talk about it. You yeah. know, a couple of stories come to mind. I'll share with you, you know, over breakfast sometime, but I won't, I won't, I won't bore our listeners about it. So <laughs> one of the things you've done in your career that, that is mentioned in your bio as brief, but I'd like to hear about it is your acting career. And you talked about it a little <laughs> bit already. Tell me a little bit about your acting career. So uh, once again, just, you know, it, it's amazing, you know, and, and one thing I like to share with people is that you're going to be asked and, and afforded opportunities. A lot of people say, well, I never got the opportunity. Well, you're not listening. Yeah. Because you get asked them. But opportunities not all day, right? Yeah. If, yeah. But if you have self-doubt, you, you're just going to dismiss them and just think, well, that, was not, that wasn't right for me. That wasn't the right opportunity. Yeah. If you're offered a ride on a rocket ship, don't ask where it's going. Ask just what seat. On. Yeah, ask which what seat do seat. I sit in? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what seat? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't care. Point. Yes, just say yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what and that's what I do. So anyways, uh, getting back to my acting career, zero mm -hmm. acting acumen, zero experience, even didn't even think it was going to happen. I actually was at an airport sports bar judging a bikini contest as an ex-NFL guy, <laughs> the celebrity yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. judge. Rough job, but somebody's got to do it, right? Yeah, somebody, yeah. you know, ah, gosh, I, if I have to, you know, yeah. it's my agent. So um, I'm sitting around the table with a bunch of guys from a TV show called First and Ten. And First and Ten was an HBO series about the California Bulls, which was a, you know, fake football team. Um, and it was managed by Shannon Tweed and OJ Simpson. I remember uh, that. I do remember <laughs> so, that. Yep. Yeah. Little did we know. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. Um, and uh, and then and then the a couple of the linemen had a bar. So the two scenes are the locker room, the field, and the bar. It was pretty much what the whole show was yeah. about. Yeah. And and it is what it was. But I said, sure, you know, I'll, I'll come check it out. They go, we, they actually said, well, hey, we need a big white guy. And I said, okay, good. I'll, I'll go do it. I qualify. Yeah. And showed up and they said, yep, yeah, you're big. You played football. Okay. So I started doing that and I had a blast doing it. You know, we were just one of the football guys. Yeah. But, but we were doing it. We get, you know, getting paid. It mostly just sat around and did nothing. And it yeah. was awesome. Hmm. Um, and then, uh, the guy goes, Hey, you should, you should get an agent. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And, uh, but sure. So I talked to an agent. She goes, Oh my gosh, you know, there's not many guys your size. And, you know, at that time I was articulate, you know, I, was, I struggled now. <laughs> <but>, um, <laughs> I don't and, know about and, that. And, uh, and so she goes, uh, she goes, we'd love to represent you. You need headshots and you need to take these classes and you need them. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, um, I'm not, I don't like taking pictures and I, Nonetheless, I uh, they signed me on, and with before I could even do those things, they had some auditions for me. And I walk into a, a Jack in the Box commercial, hmm. read the lines, everyone laughed, hmm. and then I get a principal spot. First, first audition. So I go and get this job. No, you know, HBO series. Boop, boop, boop. First audition, I get a principal spot on a Jack in the Box commercial with Tony Longo. Um, I, the next commercial I go on was a, another uh, spot. Uh, the next thing I know, I'm on a movie. I'm Dennis Hopper's bodyguard. And it's nice. called uh, uh, Sunset Heat. You know, I'm in a hmm. trailer next to Adam Ant. I'm supposed to kill him in a, in the, as part of the show. And it, and it just, it just it it was what off, it was. Huh? But I never took the classes. I never got the headshots. I never took it serious because I was still playing football. This was my okay. this was my off season. Yeah. You know why not do it? Stop. You didn't see it as a career. It was just a, a time filler yeah. and a few extra bucks. I, I was just I was young. I was I was actually also at the time the the head of security for the Roxbury in Hollywood. Oh, nice. 
That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the who's who of Hollywood. I mean, yeah, it was absolutely. Stallone, Eddie you, Murphy, yeah. Gretzky. And every artist coming in there. Yeah. wanted to be in the Roxbury. And it, yeah. it was what it was. It was a blast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's stories that'll go off the air as well. Yeah. <laughs> We're two good Christian sure men here too. who probably shouldn't even talk about it, but certainly there are some stories. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, all right. Well, we've heard a little bit about your acting career. You do a lot of public speaking. Um, I, I do want to throw I, 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 two things that I, I teased earlier, the word association, and we've done some of it. Let me throw a word at you and you just tell me where it takes you. Service. Uh, it's, it, it, I think it's another area that we discount that, that we, that we sh should be doing more of. And I have found that the more I am in the space of service and outside of myself, the, the better things are. And Denzel Washington says, uh, the most selfish thing we can do is to be of service. And because the reason is because when you're of service, you, you feel so good about yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, and, and, and it, when he said that, it resonates with me. And, and all of these things, when I was talking about purpose versus agenda, when I go in and I, and I do things with veterans, if I do you know, 22 push-ups for 22 days and I ask friends to donate a buck a push-up, well, then I give $2,500 to a, a veterans group yeah. or, or care possible and in, 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 in doing their thing and, and being of service, um, speaking to kids. I, I do two, di two different mentor platforms one with Hispanic 100 and one with the Orange County Hispanic Youth Chamber. I'm not Hispanic, as you can tell. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter to me. There's a need there. And man, both of those kids, I keep asking, I feel like I'm the mentee. These kids are 20 years old. They're rock stars, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so being a, a service, and I'm so glad I'm at a point in my life that I always thought that I needed to be a 10-year NFL guy for anybody to care about me or to, or to have all the whatever I needed to have for anybody. And you know, uh, people don't care. Yeah. They just care that you care about them. And, yeah. you know, we do it through Rotary. I do it through these platforms. And it has been such a big part of, of my life. And I, and I really enjoy it. It's been, it's been great to be in the capacity to, to do it. I interviewed, thank you. I interviewed a, a, a gentleman, Alden Mills, a few months ago, a former Navy SEAL and Navy SEAL commander. And uh, his dad, the message he got from his dad was, if, when you're stuck, serve. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has stuck with me. And I, I was raised that way as well. But I, that's, that quote has stuck with me and resonated with me since Alden shared it with me. And I think I've shared it, you know, many days, every week since. Of, you know, if you're not sure what to do, just go serve somebody. Get outside so yourself. Yeah. yeah. Chuck Knox. You mentioned him as your coach. He was. Yeah. Ground knocks. And Chuck, Chuck, Chuck was old school football. Um, and, uh, and, but the thing was, when Chuck said something, and nobody, nobody snapped back. Like you see today, you know, guys on the sidelines are mm -hmm. you with their head coaches. Yeah. Or, yeah. We laugh or, like, are you kidding me? No. Yeah, if you yeah. argue back, then then you're you're uh, you're selling cars the next day, mm -hmm. you know. So Chuck put up with with nothing, but he was, um, you know. But it was, you know, when, when you're around football, you know, dignitaries and guys that have, you know, coached. You know, here's the name again, O.J. Simpson. But mm -hmm. you know, with the Buffalo Bills and that greatness and and been around football. Um, but it was it was tough because the the game was changing right as I went there. Um, we were watching the 49ers and Bill Walsh mm -hmm. going in shorts Dominate. and shells. They were doing one practice a day and the shells in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And we were walking onto the field for our third practice. You know, we were going two a days and full pads and a third walkthrough. And, 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 and all of us wanted to be in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They're winning and they're casual. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and it was, it was Chuck's way or the highway, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't, it, it wasn't like a, you know, I, when I talk about my high school coach and, you know, but that was that football and that was, you know, he, this is, this is the head man. And, and that's just how, how it was, but, you know, he, but he was, he was a great coach. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm glad I got the experience and, and play for him. Mm -hmm. Last word I'll throw at you, and then we'll talk Super Bowl a little bit here before we uh, get into the final question or two. Right. Mentorship. And I'm not going to even say another word. Where does that take you? You know, I, I, I started doing that once again. I just started doing it this year. I'm 56 years old. Ed. Me too. I don't, Same I don't know why I waited. 
Um, other than, you know, I just, what, what value could I bring or, you know, what, what does it even mean? And I just stopped asking that question and I just came across an entity and they said, we need mentors. And I said, I'll do it. And so the first one I mentored is, is Johnny Robinson and Johnny has a window washing company and putting himself through Cal State Fullerton in the entrepreneurial platform. Um, and we started talking and I'm like, holy smokes, kid, you know, you, you, you got a, I had a hundred thousand GDP, uh, 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 gross profit uh, last year. He had four employees and you're 20 something years old and you're putting wow. yourself through school. I'm like, well, teach me something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But here, here's where it came into play. And this is so cool. Was that a few months in, he calls me, he goes, Dave, I'm, I'm really struggling. COVID had hit. He's in a service industry. It had rained for two weeks straight. Southern California doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. But everyone's keeping, everyone wants their windows washed if it's raining. Right. And he said, look, my partner wants to quit. I can't pay my, pay my employees. I'm dipping into savings and COVID. And I just don't see it happening. I, I, I'm going to quit and I'm going to go work at a supermarket because I don't want to put all the burden on my mom, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, Johnny, I go, let me share a story with you. They said in 2002, there was a stock market crash. The dot com, the dot com bubble burst. Yeah. And people lost 50, 60 to 70% of their portfolios through advisors that were chasing the dot coms. And it was a horrible time for our industry. And, and, and over half of advisors during that period just fell off. They just quit because they had lost so much money for their clients. Right. And my clients were calling me saying, Dave, uh, we just left a party. Are, are we not reading our statement right? And I said, no, yeah. you're reading it right. We didn't chase that. As a matter of fact, I would tell clients, if you want to buy that, go buy it in a different account because I understood the numbers. So anyways, so what happened was, Johnny, is that I realized a lot of these advisors are quitting just like probably a lot of your competition. If you want to quit, they want to quit. Yeah. So what I, I started calling all the people that told me no, that had advisors already. Because mm -hmm. if people are worried about their money and their advisor's not there, they want to talk to somebody. They got new, yeah. You know, Johnny, that was my best year ever. I picked up so many clients by putting it out there saying, I'm still here and my clients are doing fine. And I'll give you testimonials. Blah, 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 blah. I picked up clients left and right. I said, Johnny, I can't tell you not to quit because I understand the personal right. stress and the thing with your mom. I, you know, I don't want to step on that, but if it's just a business thing, I said, call all, all the people that told you no. Mm -hmm. Call all of your existing clients. And I understand why you canceled, but when you're ready to get a service again, we'll give you a 10% discount because of COVID. Tell all the people a perspective. Everybody in your world, you call everybody. Say, we're still here. Yeah. And, and, and we would talk. And he said, yeah, I'll do that. And then, and then he came to me with a business proposition of a company that was folding. And we looked mm -hmm. at the numbers about him buying it. You know, hmm. and I said, well, if you can get this, this and this, and then he's asking too much, um, you know, which, which kind of was a side note. And then he kind of went dark a little bit. Come to find out he was so busy. He had called me. He goes, Dale, sorry, I haven't talked to you. I just had my best month ever, 20,000 gross, uh, $20,000 growth revenue. Next month, I projected to do 50% over this month. Wow. And, and, and he goes, and I had to hire a bunch of guys and I bought that business for next to nothing. And that is what being a mentor is, yeah. uh, is about, is taking your life experiences and sharing it with somebody that's, that's younger. I'm currently mentoring a young Latina gal, hmm. an entrepreneur, you know, and I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. okay, a female Latina. Yeah, you have Dave, so much in common. Yeah, yeah. Dave, yeah. You, know what, Ed, you know what I have? I have a rock star Rolodex of Latina, female entrepreneurs that are killing it and i line her up and and they love her yeah. she loves them and she's getting so much from that so we have a lot more than just our life experiences we have our our network and our you know our community that we can share with them to lift them up and support them and to give them the stuff that they don't get at home mm -hmm. their parents love them right but, you know they, they don't, don't know what that. to teach them and what to show them right yes yeah yeah, yeah. And I just did, a, I actually do a Facebook live every week. I'm going to do one this afternoon. I do it every Tuesday at four. And one of them was each one, teach one, another Denzel. Hmm, nice. Each one, teach one, reach out and, and pull those kids up, man. And bring yeah. them up with you because they're, they're starving for it. And, yeah. and it's great service, yep. mentorship. Exactly. It stuff. goes hand in hand. Exactly. There's, there's no coincidence why those words are, are oftentimes used very, yep. very, um, almost synonymously in some extent. 
Yeah. And that sounds like that's, that's the, the big deal. One of the things that I love doing, and I know you love doing, I've seen it in your bio, but more importantly, I've heard you talk about it today and I've heard you talk about it before and that is connecting people. Mm -hmm. And it may not be, I mean, that's ultimately for me, my greatest satisfaction is here's a need. Here's a person who can fill the need and make the introduction and step away. And, uh, another thing that I've been thinking as you've been talking in the last minute or two is during a recession or during COVID or during financial crisis, one of the things that I've witnessed and I've, and I've talked to others as well is the companies and the individuals that are successful during times like this are using this time to invest in their people and invest in their customers. And yeah, you can close, you know, this Jonathan, he could have closed Jonathan. Is it Johnny? Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, He could have just closed up shop and gone and done the other thing. And, you know, and kudos to him for supporting the family and doing everything he needs, but you were able to mentor him into, you know, how, how can you reinvest your efforts into the people, stay in touch with them and so forth. So that, that's, that's a great lesson as well. I think it's just really Indeed. constantly be investing in people, whether it's financially or with your time or your, your skill or your wisdom. What's a big challenge that you faced and how you overcame it. If you think of, if you think back now you're 56, so am I. So, you know, we were both, you know, we've been through, Similar experiences. I never played in the NFL, never played college football, but, um, you know, we've, we've both had some challenges. Does any big one challenge come to mind that uh, you look back as as kind of a tipping point for you and how you overcame it? Well, uh, yeah, there, there are, um, you know, a- after, after my divorce, it, did, it didn't go swimmingly, you know, um, and it was tough and, and, and really it's, it's, it's an hour long story. So I can't, I can't really delve into it, but I did lose everything. Um, and, and, you know, when <laughs> every, everything was a lot. Yeah. Um, but more importantly than losing the material things, um, was that I lost my kind of just me. I lost my, my faith. I, I started thinking of all the horrible things that are happening because of somebody else, but I had something to do with it. <laughs> sure. what, I, what I came to figure yeah. out, you know, and I was making just a bad, a bunch of bad decisions and, and just had really gotten to a point where, okay, um, this isn't me, uh, but here I am, you know, uh, and, and I don't know how much time I've probably running out of time. Um, Sorry. but, but I talked, so, I share when I share the story, it, it goes back to sports again. You know, I'm playing against BYU, and I'm getting my rear kicked by a guy that I looked up to. I don't look up to many people. I right. walked on that scrimmage and shot nine to six nine, three hundred pounds, mm-hmm. and, and he was killing me. And um, and uh, I go in for the fifth series, and my coach grabs me by the collar and says, "Son, um, you're embarrassing me." You're embarrassing your parents and you're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So how am I doing, coach? Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, how am I doing? Yeah. Well. I do it. Yeah. So he says, sit this series out and you decide if you want to play. I've never been benched. And then, and I'm sitting there, I'm going, yeah, I deserve to be out there. But I can't very well go out there and keep doing the same thing mm-hmm. and expect a different result, right? Which definition shared. of insanity, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so I had to change up what I was doing, which I did. I ended up getting linemen of the game. For that it gave me so much boost of confidence and, and so forth and so i know back to life you know and when life was kicking my my butt and everything was taken away from me and and and, and god sat me down and said son who do you want to be embarrassing me yeah you're embarrassing <laughs> your parents and you're embarrassing yourself hmm. you know if you want to do this sit this you know sit sit down and take it i'm like yeah i this is not me and i need to yeah. I want to get back to doing what I'm doing, but I can't very well go back doing the same thing that I'm doing right. and expect a different result. No, that's so and good. I, and it was a yeah. pivot for me. And, and Ed, when, when you look at my bio on LinkedIn, it's half of what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm living such a purpose-driven life and in, in, in faith and in doing things. And I'm telling you, it multiplies every day, just connecting with you and being able to do this show. And I, and I appreciate the opportunity because then I get to talk to somebody else through this that maybe right. is struggling and, and saying, gosh, if that guy who went there, went down to there and now is back here can do it, then, then so can I, and so then they I. want to learn more. And that's what it's about. And, um, you know, I mean, it was, it, it's just, that's as tough as it gets to be in, in essence, a millionaire to have nothing to be not a millionaire, but I'm, mm-hmm, but I'm sure. doing so many great things right. and, I, and I just, uh, I'm just so grateful. 
That's that's I love that you know step back and you know your coach pulling you off the field was one of the greatest things he could have done because I think Absolutely. we all need to step back and look at I I do a a nightly meditation on the Calm app. It's one of my favorite things. And I've done it for like ninety two straight days now, and I write in a I just open journal write for just one page. My my goal every night before I go to bed, listen to these two meditations, and then sometimes what I write has everything to do with what I just meditated or heard. And other times it has nothing to do with it. And I don't know until the pen hits paper what it's going to be. And two nights ago, I wrote about perspective mm. and the big aha for me. And the meditation wasn't about perspective, by the way, but it's the word that kept popping up for me is to pull myself back and look at my life from a different perspective. What are other people? Not that I care what other people think of me, but ultimately it got me to what does God think of me? And that right. was what the perspective was that really matters, that matters the most. And that's, you know, am I embarrassing God? Am I embarrassing my family? And am I embarrassing myself? You know, right. those are, those are three great questions to, to ask myself. So, no, I think that uh, that perspective that we get when we step outside the box a little bit and look back in at what are we doing and what's the impact that we're making? What's next for you? What's the big, the big goal you have now that you're excited about? What's, what's uh, getting you up tomorrow morning? Uh, what's my 4 a.m.? Yeah, it's your 4 a.m. Exactly. 4 a. M. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, it is it is it is the, the the progression and the next steps for path to um, so proud of the relationships we're, we're forging and and the potential we have to, to help people. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, I have um, I have a couple of, of book ventures that have already titled and started. Uh, one is Hey, Big Guy, hmm. uh, a guide to growing up bigger than most talking about growing up you know, not fitting in, being uncoordinated, not being able to do one push up, hmm. um, and being bullied and all those things, uh, to persevering, you know, and, 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 and having like-minded stories attached to it. And, and the other, the other book is called benched. Um, hmm. so, uh, hmm. anyhow, um, so I'm writing, you know, I'm doing those. I've been asked to co-host a, a sports talk show that we're doing some pilots next month. Sweet. I love doing my keynote speaking and talking to producers about how to become a top producer consistently year over year. Anybody can do it once, but how are you going to do it next year? Yeah. You know, and so I love keynote speaking and I love working with kids. Uh, one other thing that I, I want to let people know about is uh, Mission Sports. Uh, Mission Sports is a faith-based sports camp that we have uh, that were launched, but we're waiting for COVID to allow us to do it. Our, our first right. camp is actually going to be in Missouri. But we have Detroit, Houston, and then we're launching really here in Santa Ana. And I do a podcast for that, and it's called The Locker Room. And I have cool. uh, professional athletes on, high school athletes, coaches, awesome. uh, that talk about their experience and then faith. And 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 heck, I, I should have I should have you as a, as a guest. And uh, I'd love uh, that. Yeah, and I'd love to put the links for all of that up in, in the the notes for this when I post this oh, podcast. And, and and I do I do have to say, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ed. You know, yeah. I, I, I always, I, and it, it seems like this always comes up because of my old age and my concussions. I have to say stuff when I'm thinking about it, but there you go. I, hear I you. almost forgot. Uh, our path to program does cost money. And uh, yeah. anybody in your, in your community, uh, we want to provide a discount. So, you know, if you just put heart 50 into the, if you, if you guys meander your way to path two and you think, well, this makes sense for my student or for cool. myself, put heart 50 in for a discount of $50 off the program. Um, you know, then that'll be good for whomever hears this and whomever puts it in. H A R T so. like my last name, or H E A R T like the heart. Wait, I want it. I, well, branding. So all right, H A R T. I love it. I'll, I'll, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, I appreciate that. So of no, course, that, that's, yeah, fantastic. No, I, I'm I'm excited for chapter two of this conversation because we've just started turning the page into new topics that would be great to talk about, um, and we'll do that. For sure. And as good. we go forward with this and as we get through COVID and we're back into the real world and we're doing the things that we've been preparing for, I'm excited for those conversations too. Likewise. So who's going to win the Super Bowl and why? Uh, I, I don't see Kansas City losing. I don't either. I, you know, but to I, me, at the same time, I don't see Tom Brady losing. So it's well, kind of uh, you, and it's you, in you, Tampa you, Bay. It's a home game, quote unquote, for them, but still. I'm not betting on it. Fans. <laughs> I'm not putting any money on it, <laughs> nor, nor would I. I'm not going to bet against Tom Brady ever, but right. it just seems to me that Kansas City, even when they're losing, it's like they're just like a cat with a mouse, and they're just batting it around playing. Yeah. And then when they decide to exactly. put their hand down yeah. and Fourth play, they like, can turn right, it on any switch. time and just go. It, it's just amazing. It hasn't been since the Rams uh, with uh, Kurt Warner and that show, you know, and uh, yeah. um, 
greatest show. Marshall Falk, you know, the, the team could score points at will. And it's just, it's just amazing to see. Uh, I, I, I think it's going to be a neat matchup, though. I think, you know, Tampa's got the, the defense. They've got a run game to keep Kansas City off the field. And yeah. um, we'll, we'll see. You know, you gotta, and, you know, Brady's a dink, dink, dink guy. Takes up yep. time, chews up clock. Yep. Um, that's, that's the one thing that can beat Kansas City is keep that offense off the field. I've never rooted for Tom Brady. Uh, I've never been a Patriots fan. I know he's with Tampa Bay now. Yeah. Um, I respect the fact that he's in his early 40s. He's playing in his 10th Super Bowl. Can you imagine? Mm. I, I, I giggle when I literally just did, and I giggle when I think of somebody playing in 10 Super Bowls and potentially winning seven if he wins on Sunday. Yeah, but, uh, can't argue that. No, it'll be a fun game to watch. Indeed. So as I mentioned, and we're going to wrap up here, um, name of the podcast, you just t- alluded to it with the Heart 50 discount for Path 2, which is great. And we'll put that in there as well. From the Heart, last name, obviously. But really, this whole conversation has been, you know, tapping into your heart. So it's almost a redundant question to ask because you just shared an hour of what's in your heart. But I'm going to just finish the, que- the conversation today and just say, Dave, what's in your heart? Uh, my heart is to... Um continue my walk in faith. And, uh, and my, my younger brother is a head pastor of a church. And, you know, I, I'm not, I, I'm not a person that quotes scripture and do those things, but everything I'm doing now is just towards walking in my faith and letting people know that if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. But it all starts with, you know, the, the Jesus and the Holy Spirit and working in, in doing things that are of service to, to others and, and it's working. And so why, why mess it up? 